it, I heard it came it, when it come over. What did it sound like? A terrain. So you think it may have been a tornado? It was a tornado. April 27th, 2011 may go down as the single worst day in U.S. history for tornadoes. And our report this morning is dedicated to that tornado outbreak which affected us locally and statewide. Wednesday storms presented another round of severe weather for an already hard-hit central Mississippi. Power outages in Kosciuszko began at 2 a.m. The Boswell Media News and Weather Center operated on emergency generator power for 14 hours Wednesday. A possible tornado touchdown at 2 a.m. in the Possum Neck and Springdale area had damage reports coming in in the early hours and school canceled on a state testing day. Traffic problems occurred in Kosciuszko as the stoplights all went dark. I was just at the traffic lights, you know, traffic lights are out. Somebody just blew through it about 50 mile nine, didn't even stop. What witnesses told us was a twister was spotted in Philadelphia, first hanging over the Pearl River Resort at 2 p.m. and then near Philadelphia's Walmart. There was, a, there was two of them actually joined together in front of Walmart. Two wow. big old, yeah, and that's the one that hit north side, and I think they got the, uh, I think it hit, uh, uh, the meal down there by the right. National Guard Armory. Damage was reported on the Choctaw Reservation. It later caused damage to Northside Park and destroyed two houses and a mobile home. I had dozed off on my couch, and when I heard the roaring coming over, I jumped up and grabbed my two nieces to get out of the house. And by the time we got in our vehicle to leave, the, it had done gone over us and was traveling on down 21. Neshoba County Emergency Management officials did not confirm any injuries with the storm. Power was restored for much of Leake County in the afternoon and just after 4 p.m. in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media's Melvin Wooten reported straight line winds caused damage throughout Carthage as square businesses and homes were damaged. There was some on-in damage on the core square. One one uh, street over, uh, Dr. Tommy Jones, uh, the dentist, and Clayton Barber and Salon, the uh, roof is peeled off of it. 39 Mississippi counties are now under a state of emergency. Now to Choctaw County, where officials say a Louisiana police officer was killed during Wednesday storms as he tried to shield his daughter from the weather. Reports say the officer, Lieutenant Wade Sharp, was on a camping trip at Jeff Busby State Park and covered his daughter with his body to protect her when a tree limb hit him on the head, killing him. The daughter was not hurt. Choctaw County officials had no additional information. A news release from the Natchez Trace Parkway said the 40-year-old man was from Covington, Louisiana. Now to Kemper County, between Neshoba County and Alabama, where sisters were killed during the storm. Flory Green and Maxine McDonald and their sister-in-law, Johnny Green, all died in a mobile home that was destroyed. Johnny Green's daughter-in-law said Flory Green and McDonald owned mobile homes side-by-side side and Johnny Green lived nearby. Johnny Green was at one of the woman's homes at the time the storm hit. It's hard. It's been very difficult, Mary Green said. They were thrown into the pines over there, she said, pointing to a wooded area. They had to go look for their bodies. Now to Monroe County, which may have seen the biggest death toll from the storms. The same cell that prompted a tornado warning for Atala in Choctaw counties around 4 p.m. Wednesday produced a tornado that may have killed nearly 20 people in the town of Smithville. Early reports from the town say the Piggly Wiggly, the town's funeral home, and a service station were destroyed with people inside. A temporary morgue had been set up to handle the dead. And now to the south. In general, fierce storms that spawned tornadoes across the south killed at least 85 people as they wiped out homes and businesses, forced a nuclear power plant to use backup generators, and even prompted the evacuation of a National Weather Service office. The death toll was at least 61 killed in Alabama alone, a number that was likely to increase. The National Weather Service's Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma, said it received 137 tornado reports around the region so far, including 66 in Alabama and 38 in Mississippi. One of the hardest hit areas Wednesday was Tuscaloosa. The city's police and other emergency services were devastated, the mayor said, and at least 15 people were killed and about 100 were in a single hospital. A massive tornado, part of the same cell that hit Neshoba in Kemper counties, was caught on camera on a news tower as it barreled through the city late Wednesday afternoon, leveling block after block. By nightfall, the city was dark. Roads were impassable. Signs blown down in front of restaurants, businesses unrecognizable, and sirens wailed off and on. Debris littered the streets and sidewalks. Elsewhere, 11 people were reported dead in Georgia, and one person died each in Tennessee and Virginia. The storms spread destruction from Texas to New York, where dozens of roads were flooded or washed out. President Barack Obama said he had spoken with Alabama Governor Robert Bentley and approved his request for emergency federal assistance, including search and rescue assets. About 1,400 National Guard soldiers were being deployed around the state of Alabama. Storms also struck Birmingham, felling numerous trees that impeded 
impeded emergency responders and those trying to leave hard-hit areas. The Browns Ferry nuclear power plant about 30 miles west of Huntsville lost off-site power. The Tennessee Valley Authority-owned plant had to use seven diesel generators to power the plant's three units. The safety systems operated as needed and the emergency event was classified as the lowest of four levels. In Huntsville, meteorologists found themselves in the path of severe storms and had to take shelter in a reinforced steel room, turning over monitoring duties to the Jackson, Mississippi office. Back here in Itala County, power has been restored to most customers, and as far as we know, no school cancellations or business closings for today, so it's looking good for business to operate as normally. Philadelphia Phillies ace Roy Oswalt left the team for Mississippi, where tornadoes have caused death and widespread damage near his home in Choctaw County. The team said Oswalt went back to make sure his wife and daughter were safe and there weren't, uh, wasn't any significant damage to his home. As you remember, last year his parents' home was destroyed by a tornado. Uh, no timetable has been set for his return to the Phillies, although they were hopeful he'd be back for the next start. Oswalt left the team before Wednesday's game against Arizona, a day after leaving the clubhouse early following a rough outing against the Diamondbacks. Now, if you're looking for other news, you can check out our websites at breezynews.com and kicks98.com. There's plenty of news on there and also plenty of storm reports from the past day or so. Now, what's the weather going to be like for the rest of the day and the rest of the week? Well, today we can expect sunny skies as that cold front came through, 73 for the high. Clear skies in 46 tonight, sunny and 81 for Friday. And for the Natchez Trace Festival on Saturday, sunny skies and 83 degrees. Next rain chances on Sunday and Monday. For comprehensive local and state weather coverage, log on this morning to Kicks98.com and BreezyNews.com. In the Boswell Media News and Weather Center, I'm Chris Davis.